So we're on the way to the gym for the final session here in South Florida. Then we're heading out to Newark for the fight. Back-to-back pay-per-views. Like, it's gotta be surreal for you at some point, you know? Like, could you tell me a little bit about your story and just how we got to this moment? <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of things, you know, at first, I remember my first martial arts was karate, but it, when I was a kid, me, me and my brothers, we had a, a we had a, a space in the backyard that we wasn't using, and my dad ran ran that to a to a karate coach. So he was teaching, we were training, we competed a lot. But I think I was super super young. I think I was six or seven, and then we did for like three four years. And that guy was so good that he he got an opportunity out of state, so he moved out of state. And then and then we kind of stopped a little bit to to do it. Uh, and I remember 1998, I don't remember what month, I was 12 years old, and my dad back there, my dad had a lot of different jobs, you know, he was working at home, he tried to do his own business, that's what he was always trying to do, and at one moment he had a car wash, we were working on it, another time he had a, a shampoo company, then another time he had a uh, a tire company, a body shop, and then at this time, <clears throat> when at that moment, 1998, he was fixing the inside of the car. If a car coming with the with, with bad finger on on the, on the top here or a scratch here, or we were changing all of that, and we were home. I was 12 years old. We were helping my dad, me and my my two brothers, Herbert and Fred. We were helping my dad out with all of that. And one, one car came one day and one of those clients had a key inside the car. A key with a black and a red belt. That, that's a master in Jiu-Jitsu, I didn't know. But I saw that uh, black and red and black belt and a key on it. We kind of saw the key, but we had a key from karate. You know, that key was a little bit more, more thin and strong key. And uh, we start playing with the geese, you know, we were helping my dad looking for coins and, and you know, looking for anything we can, we can see in the car. And uh, that, that's how it started. You know, I think my daddy saw an opportunity there. And I was thinking, I was thinking that that story I knew for like over 20 years that I thought my dad exchanged the service for us to train but that wasn't the real truth the real truth was <clears throat> the jiu-jitsu coach was not going to pay for the service and then my dad and he almost got into a fight and then eventually he said okay i don't have money but the kids can't train so that wait was a, a minute wait a minute, yeah, that wait was a minute. Train. We, can't, we can't move on that quick one yeah. second my, so you... my daddy never told me I still have a good relationship with that coach, his son and everything, because I always thought that my daddy traded the, the, the payment for us to train. But the real truth is the guy was wow. not going to pay. Wow. And, uh, Incredible. And, uh, and then my daddy, they got when, into it. When did you find that out? I think two years ago, two, three years ago, and then I was always telling the story. And I tell them my dad traded in the, the in this and that, but then he say, "Oh, you want to know the real story?" I say, "Yeah." And when he said that, I say, "Why you let me lie for the whole?" <laughs> it's not a lie because I didn't know, but why you didn't tell me? I remember the lessons you like. So we start training, right? First day we went there, it was great. We had a lot of kids. We start playing. We're having a lot of fun. We're learning a lot of new things. And uh, on the first day back. My dad asked, did you guys like the training? And I said, yeah, we like it. And then I said, okay, if you guys really like it, you guys gotta go make sure you guys do your best and make sure you guys are one of the best. Because the deal is you guys get three months of training. After that, I have to pay that I don't have money. So you guys make sure you guys do your best every time you get there. Because in three months, if I ask for, for, for free training, for scholarship, and if you guys are not good, they're not gonna give it to you. Make sure if you guys really like it, if you really wanna keep going, make sure you guys 
train hard, you know, make sure you're the best in there. And then, and that was a mentality that I still carry by today, you know. Mm. Uh, I carry my sponsorships, I carry the UFC. I carry at the gym when I train because that changed my mentality. So I start training hard every day. We got to get a little early there, help with the clean up. We got to stay a little longer, help with the clean up. That's why this guy, oh, you're cleaning the mats. And I say, yeah, I've been doing that for years. But that mentality to kind of do more than everybody, do a little more and I'll work and do more. So <clears throat> that was establishing me on the first day of my training. You know? So that was something that my dad put on me and my brothers that I, I, I never went away. You know, I always, when I'm there, I want to, it's not that I want everyone to look at me. It's not that, it's not that. But I one day to notice, oh shit, that guy's working super hard. Yeah, was there ever a time along your journey where you got discouraged and you were losing sight of your dream and how'd you overcome that? Or? Yeah, a couple of times. I remember <clears throat> another hard decision too was when I was <clears throat> 2007. So kind of almost 20 years in, 1998, I started 2007. Uh, I had to, ten, almost 10 years later, 2007, I had to go to, I had to make a decision because the training in Rio wasn't the best training. At one time, Rio was the capital of Jiu Jitsu for years. But in 2007, that changed to Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo used to be because everybody in Rio moved out to MMA, everybody started doing MMA. That's the surgeon or Jose Aldo and all, and all these guys in Rio. Because 2007, everybody took the gear out and started doing it in May. I mean, the best guys, right? So the highest level. So then I had to move out of Sao Paulo because I still want to do Jiu-Jitsu. My dream back then is still want to be a Jiu-Jitsu world champion. But I have a lot of things taken care of at that time. I had a sponsor that was paying me my competition. The other sponsor was giving me. I don't was. I was not gonna make. I was in. I was not making a lot of money. But everything was taken care of. One guy gave me supplements, the other guy gave me this, the other guy paid that, the other, everything was taken care of. Even I have a sponsor that was paying my college. So wow. I was doing college in the morning and I was training afternoon and at night. And everything was taken care of. But then I had to make a decision to go to Sao Paulo because the Sao Paulo training was better. But when I kind of talked to those sponsors, the guy that was, who was not sponsored because a lot of them wasn't giving me money, but they were helping me out. So all those supporters that, I, that, that would help me out when I talked to them, I would move out of Sao Paulo, they couldn't keep supporting me because that was a different state, you know, and, the, and this, those businesses were super small, so it doesn't make sense. So I got to quit every single one of them and move out of Sao Paulo with zero support, starting from scratch, and that was very hard for me because then I got to start working as a security on the weekends and training all day. and competing in that was my first year as a black belt I got my black belt in 2007 when I moved out and the first year as a black belt is, is a hustle you know it's very hard maybe the two, the two first years because whenever you got your black belt you're just a brand new guy it's just like it's just like you you just got out of college you just finished college and now you're gonna look for for a job but every, a lot of people is looking for a job but where it's just kind of like the same mentality when I got my black belt, there was a lot of black belts there already. And then I just moved out of Sao Paulo. It was, it was a very hard time for me. The end of 2007, the, in the whole 2008, that was a very, very hard year for me. I had to work on the weekends. And then I <clears throat> I remember I had bronchitis. And uh, I remember it was a, it was a uh, pay phone, those coin phones. I get a couple coins, I call my mom, and I was kind of getting sick, and I was going to ask for, I asked her for money because I was broke, like, I had nothing. I remember my rent, if I do the, 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 the exchange right now, my rent will be like seven, eight dollars a month, and then I didn't have to, I have guys paying me, helping out with paying my rent, and uh, that week that I remember, I was having bronchitis, I was gonna call my mom just to, to see if she had money for, for medicine to help me out. When I call her, 
long time I don't talk to her. I'm not gonna ask for money right away. You know, I'm gonna, hey mom, how you doing? How is everything? How you feeling? And then whenever <clears throat> we start talking, she was telling me, I, again, I ask, I call her to ask for money. Whenever she got the phone and we start talking, she asked if I have any money to send it to her. And I was just like, yeah, I don't right now, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna send it to you pretty soon, you know? And then I just like, at wow. that time I was broken. I was kind of having a thought on quit. Not quit, but it was, was, was very hard. And I was doubting myself. I was, so you had no money, I had no you were money. sick. Your I, was, see, I was asking for money when I was about to ask. She asked me first, mm. and then I knew it. Like you know what, I gotta do something. I'm not gonna let my. Mom and what did you do at that moment? Like whenever you got to that point and you realized, like, look, my back's on the wall. What do I gotta do? Because there's only two choices, right? Yeah, I could quit and I could cry about it and I could complain about it. And I kind of thought about it, but I used that as a few. You no, know, I used that. I remember me talking to myself and saying, I'm going to make it happen, you know. I got to make it happen. I have to make it happen, and I want to make it happen. And, and then I remember I started just going crazy, training and, and, and doing everything. Like a couple, couple of days, I, I was feeling better. I wasn't sick, and then I was just back on the hustle. And, it took a little while, it wasn't that easy to change, you know, but 2000, like I said, 2008 was a very hard year for me. 2009, I was second place in the Warriors in Jiu Jitsu, and so things started got better, you know, I, I was doing more seminars, I was getting more sponsors. 2010 was one of my best years, you know, I was Brazilian national champion, European champion, Abu Dhabi pro champion, and I was third place in Warriors. 2011 became, I eventually became a world champion and things start changing, you know, things got a lot better, but <clears throat> I think that, that those those hard times in, uh, in accepting that, you know, people don't accept, sometimes you just gotta accept that, okay, you gotta suck for a little bit, you know, you gotta be on, on a bad time for a little bit, eventually it's gonna change, but but not accept being okay. Accept just you know what I'm not gonna I'm not gonna cry about it. I'm just gonna keep working. I think those when I make these decisions kind of help me to go through all that. You know, okay, you gotta suck a little bit. The first thing is a black belt. It's hard. I have no money, but eventually I'm gonna make it. You know, so sure. Did you did you grow up at the church? Or how did God play a role in this? Uh, my 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 whole, whole family is, is Catholic. You know, my parents. Uh, my brother's too, we grow up in a Catholic church. But my grandma, when I, that was kind of my one of my favorite things to do when I was we was in the summer, out of school. I would love to, to spend time with my grandma. She was in Copacabana, so it was a nice place. We had a beach in there. So I would like to always, when I had a good time, to spend time with my grandma. And she was more Christian, and she was bringing me always to a Christian church. And. Uh, in Sao Paulo, when I moved out of state to Sao Paulo to train there, one of my coaches, Ramon Lemos, he used to bring us to the church, do a Bible study. So then I became Christian in there, and then I met Vitor too. Vitor is another Christian. And like, and then I became a Christian, you know, become, uh, and then I was baptized here with Vitor. And uh, yeah, and today I'm a Christian, but I grew up in a Catholic church. Yeah, you recommend everyone get a relationship with God? I think the relationship with God is everything, you know, I think. <clears throat> it's not about religion. Mm. I don't think sometimes people uh, make a lot of, you know, they, they don't know the difference. They, they think so much about religion. But the relationship with God is the most important, you know, I think. I think you've got to accept, you know, that I, I, I understand there's a God out there, you know, I, I understand that and I believe that that, that He's alive and then and He provides a lot of things for us. And I and I respect that because people kinda 
just remember God when something bad happened, you know, and then it's, oh my God, oh please God. Or whenever you're in a very bad situation. But I started making that relationship, especially on those hard times, you know, I remember 2007, even before that when we were broken at home, we didn't have money. Like I said, I never starved, but we have a hard, difficult moment for a while, I think. And then growing up in a family that, that has a faith, it kind of helped me a little bit to have the faith. But eventually, it's not just the faith, it's not just going to church, but it's to start the relationship with God and talk to Him and listen to Him. And a lot of those hard times, I, I put my knees on the ground and I prayed. And, Every decision that I made moving out of state, moving to U.S., start doing MMA, you know, all those decisions, I, I prayed first and put my knee down and had a great relationship. We had a good talking, good asking, feeling on my heart the answer and going for it. Sometimes I didn't feel my heart answer and didn't do it, you know. So I think that <clears throat> that relationship is, is everything, you know. It's, it gives you confidence to do it, to not to do it. And uh, <clears throat> it plays a whole in my life, you know. Absolutely. What's up, guys? Gilbert Burns right here, and I'm with Life Cycle, the mushroom. So this is my favorite one, Cordyceps. This one is a pre-workout. I'm going to my training now. I do like six to eight sprays. This one is good for a pre-workout. Then we have a bunch right here. Reishi, I can take after training or at night before sleep, shiitake before sleep. Chaga, you can take at any time of the day just to boost your immunity system. I do two drops. And then another favorite one, Lion's Mane. Lion's Mane helps so much in your focus. If you gotta do a, a read, or if you gotta go to a meeting, or if you gotta go to a training session, like was meant to take three of those before training. We still got a bunch of more, still got turkey tail, still got a bunch of different ones. Man, this be helping me a lot on my training camp, especially right now getting back-to-back -back fights. I gotta be in shape, you gotta be health. Make sure you guys check it out. Life cycle, and like I said, this one's my favorite one. Pre-workout, the best one you can have. So I hope you guys keep checking out, and making sure you subscribe. If you're not subscribed, you, yeah, you, coming for you. Make sure you subscribe, guys, that helped me so much. Leave a comment, I'm gonna look forward for the comments. I read every single one, my guy responds, so then I respond. And uh, that's it guys, activate, share, please do, you guys help me out so much, we want to elevate those, those clips, I gotta put a lot more content, so make sure you subscribe, let's freaking go almost there.